All right, in uh, this problem, we are uh, asked to decide which reactant is oxidized and which is reduced, All right? And then we're going to designate the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. All right, so I have uh, just copied this uh, out on my paper and uh, I'll be using that um, as a reference. Okay, so you look at this and it's like, wow, this is a long equation, but don't let that uh, get you down. Um, we will just take this one part at a time. You'll remember um, the way we, there's two ways we can uh, determine whether um, something is oxidized or reduced. We can look at it in terms of the electrons. If it loses electrons, it's oxidation. If it gains electrons, it's reduction. You'll remember the uh, acronym LEO says GER, L-E-O, loss of electrons is oxidation, um, and GER, gain in electrons, is reduction. Okay. The other way is um, we can uh, look at, um, well, it's really the same, same thing, the oxidation numbers. Um, uh, is essentially like the electrons, okay? So, but if you look at it in terms of the oxidation number, it might make a little bit more sense because if you lose electrons and you're thinking, okay, uh, my, my charge is increasing. And so, anyway, if you look at the oxidation number, the higher the oxidation number, the more, you know, it's oxidized. The lower the, when it lowers, it's reduced, so it's more straightforward, perhaps, that way. All right, so anyway, we're going to look at, at this problem element by element and find out what are the oxidation numbers for each element, okay? So we'll start off with the obvious one. Tin is all by itself. The oxidation number is just its charge, okay? So its oxidation number is a, uh, a positive two, all right? Um, and now we can look over here. A rule for oxidation numbers, oxygen, much like its charge, uh, when it's in an ionic compound, is um, almost always negative two, okay, um, for its charge. So what is chromium then in this compound? Well, um, the, I have seven oxygen atoms, okay? Each one will have that negative two, so I can, what I can do is write up a little equation for this, okay? I don't know what chromium is, but I have two of those. So I'll call it x, 2x, whatever chromium's oxidation number is, times two, plus my seven oxygen, each one being the negative two, will give me the charge, okay, negative two. If there's no charge, if it's a neutral compound, it'd be zero, right? So here I have negative 14, so 2x minus 14 equals negative two, or if I move that over, 2x is 12, x is six, okay? So my oxidation number for chromium is a, uh, a positive six. All right. Now, what about um, this one? Um, well, it's just H and O, and hydrogen is the, uh, the other one that we um, generally always find as a positive one, um, and oxygen being the negative two. Okay. Um, and that works out. I have three of the positive one charges, uh, not charges, sorry, these are oxidation numbers. It's really the, the same concept, but charges are for ionic compounds, okay? Covalently bonded uh, compounds, or the covalent bonds, they're sharing electrons, so it's not really a charge, um, and so, but we just give it this oxidation number as though, um, it were a charge. Um, so anyway, 
oxygen is a negative 2. If I have three hydrogens, that adds up to a positive 1. Okay. So let's uh, move along. And here now, chromium is plus 3. Oh, by the way, whether it's on the left or the right, um, the charges, usually, technically, we write them with uh, uh, the sign after it, uh, after the number of charges. But uh, don't be confused by that. It doesn't uh, make that much difference. All right? And here, tin is a positive 4. And water, again, we have positive 1 and a negative 2 oxygen is always a negative 2, except in, in certain rare circumstances um, like peroxides and uh, superoxides, that sort of thing, then it's different. But in the vast majority of compounds, always negative 2. Likewise for the hydrogen, there are some exceptions. Hydrides, uh, rare compounds that we don't deal much with. Uh, we don't deal with those much in general chemistry. Um, so it's always plus 1 for our purposes. Okay, so now let's look at this and see which one has been oxidized, which one has been reduced. The hydrogen and the oxygen haven't changed, so those are out. Okay, they're plus one and minus two. However, the, uh, the chromium went from a plus six to a plus three. All right, so chromium went from 6 to 3, and 10 went from 2 to 4. You'll know, uh, notice that the direction is always opposite. Chromium's going down, it's being reduced, okay, um, because it's, the oxidation number is being reduced, so it's reduced. Um, tin's oxidation number is being increased, so it's more oxidized. Okay, so they always come in pair, in pairs. Um, you can never have, um, you know, just you know, you can't have two reductions and no oxidation. They always come in pairs because if something is reduced, something had to reduce it, and what reduced it was what was oxidized. Okay, um, so. Now, what we, we've determined that chromium was reduced, tin was oxidized. What was it that reduced the chromium? Okay, well, the, the reducing agent is what caused the reduction, and that is the same thing that was oxidized. So the tin is my reducing agent. All right, and the oxidizing agent is what oxidized my tin. It was what brought about the oxidation, and that is um, the chromium compound. This, the, the whole thing is my oxidizing agent, okay? Um, but the, the chromium really is uh, the only part that was technically uh, reduced there, okay? So tin was my reducing agent to reduce the chromium, the uh, dichromate ion, and that's the Cr207, dichromate is my oxidizing agent which oxidizes the tin. Right? So they go in pairs and then they're just opposites when you're looking at the agents versus um, which one was actually reduced and which one was oxidized. Okay.